In this Q&A video, we're going to answer the question, can I provide RCD protection at the socket outlet rather than the distribution board? Now, just before we explain the answer to this question, please be aware that this video is one of a series that we've made on the subject of underfloor to desk wiring systems. They can be viewed individually, or you can click the link in the description below to view them as part of a free online training package to help you with your CPD, and you'll receive a certificate to prove you've completed the course. This is a really interesting question because it relates in part to a bit of a blip in the regs that left a type of RCD out in the cold for a while, which has now been added in. Keep watching to find out what that device is. When installing this underfloor to desk wiring system, there's a number of options for providing RCD protection. You can either install an RCD in the DB at the source of the supply circuit, or you can use one of these power modules that uses an RCD to protect additional modules connected to the front here. Or finally, there's an option to install sockets with built-in RCDs protecting whatever you plug into the front of them. This nicely illustrates the point that we provide RCD protection at various different points along the circuit, and naturally raises the question, where should the RCD protection go? To answer this question, we need to think about what purpose the RCD is serving. RCDs can be used to provide earth fault protection or additional protection. Earth fault protection is required to disconnect a circuit or a load when a live conductor, either line or neutral, comes into contact with the earthing arrangement of an electrical installation. This could be via an exposed conductive part or circuit protective conductor. This type of protection, however, is usually provided by the device offering overload protection, and so an MCB or a fuse could cover the requirements for earth fault protection as well. However, if you have a TT system, then an RCD can be used for this purpose. The far more common application for an RCD nowadays is to use them for additional protection. Additional protection is mainly in place to protect people rather than property from the harmful effects of electricity. For a long time, RCDs were used to provide additional protection to socket outlets. It started with sockets for use outdoors before becoming more and more stringent a requirement. Until now, it's almost impossible to install a socket outlet without providing additional protection in the form of an RCD. Then, new regulations came into effect relating to cables buried in walls. If someone drills into or hammers a nail into a wall and makes contact with the line conductor, they can suffer shock, injury or death by electrocution. There's various ways around this. Among others, you can install the cables so they're buried more than 50mm deep in the wall. You can protect the conductors by enclosing them in earth, metal, conduit or trunking, or you can install armoured cable. These options are fairly impractical in many installations, and so the easiest route to go down for cables buried in walls is just to provide additional protection in the form of an RCD. So the answer as to where the RCD goes depends on what it's protecting. In the installation at Imperial College London, the socket outlets are installed in floor boxes. These are connected via tap-offs to a Powertrack 63 amp buzz bar system. This power track is fed by an SWA cable which comes from the distribution board. So here we've got an SWA cable that at no point in its run is buried in a wall, and even if it was, it wouldn't need RCD protection as long as the armoring is earthed. So the RCD could go in the distribution board, and if it did, it would provide additional protection to the sockets but it doesn't have to go in there in this instance. If the installation was for some reason using twin and CPC buried less than 50 mil in the wall, then it would need the RCD at the start of the circuit to protect both the cable and the sockets. So if we don't install the RCD protection in the board, can we put it in the middle somewhere? Well, yes, we can. This power module with the RCD on board is designed to connect straight into the power track, and then you can connect additional modules into these Wyland GST sockets on the front, and the outlets on those will have RCD protection. The final option for providing additional protection, and this is the slightly confusing one, in fact there was for a period a lot of debate as to whether it was compliant with the regs or not, is to install these socket outlets that have an RCD built into them. Now it's important to note that these last two options are fine for providing additional protection to the socket outlets, but they won't provide any kind of protection for the upstream circuit supplying the sockets. And funnily enough, that's what made the last option of the RCD protected socket a bit controversial for a short period. If we go back to the 18th edition prior to any amendments and look in regulation 531.3.6 under the heading RCDs for additional protection, we read, the use of RCDs with a rated residual operating current not exceeding 30 milliamps is recognized as additional protection in compliance with regulation 415.1. These RCDs shall be provided to comply with the requirements of regulation 411.3.3. It then lists the acceptable devices for this purpose. RCDs for additional protection in AC installations shall comply with BSEN 61008 series or BSEN 61009 series or BSEN 62423. 
Okay, so which of those standards does this RCD socket comply with? Well, if we flip it over, you can see that it's BS7288, so none of those listed. Does that mean that if we're relying on this socket for additional protection for whatever we plug into it, it's non-compliant? Well, strictly speaking, under this older version of the regs, not really. However, if we turn to the second amendment, the 18th edition, we find it in the same regulation at the bottom of the list of devices, BS7288, nice and compliant. So what changed? Basically, there was some ambiguous wording in BS7288 that stated that if this type of socket was used on an installation, then additional protection is required in the circuit feeding it. This made it unclear whether BS7288 ensured that this type of socket outlet would protect a person's life in the event of them getting a shock to earth. Really, I think it was just stating that the RCD technology in here wouldn't provide additional protection to someone drilling through the cable supplying the socket outlet. But it was enough to prevent it being included in the older version of the 18th edition. Fortunately, the wording has now been modified in BS7288. Funnily enough, around the same time the second amendment to the 18th edition was launched, and it could now be included in the list of approved RCD types. So there we go, we now know where the RCD protection needs to go depending on the installation circumstances. Now, you may have noticed that some of these power tracks have these red outlets. Now that denotes that this is a clean earth system. To find out what that means, check out this video right here, or click the link in the description below to watch it as part of our free training package to help you with your CPD, and you'll receive a free certificate as well. All that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.